Okay, hey everybody, it's Brett from uh, Moonstream Crypto, and of course, this is our Crypto Mastery class. Sorry for the delay, everybody. I'm uh, out of the office and had some tech issues here to uh, get this thing going. Just going to let some more people in, uh, which Myreen is doing now. And so, uh, well, lots going on in the market. Uh, serves me right, trying to get out of town for a, a day of R&R &R and big down day in the market, but nothing that uh, we haven't been talking about already. It did send a video out yesterday to expect a pullback possibly down to 60k so we're gonna dive into that and so what i'm gonna do is, is turn off the video here because we're kind of unlimited bandwidth i'm not in the office with the war machine and multiple monitors but that's okay pretty simple messaging that uh, just want to convey and what's going on in the markets here today but uh, again because we're sort of uh, low on bandwidth here i'm going to if i can get my controls back here to load i'm going to turn off my camera here but i just wanted to say hi everybody and so i'll kill that now and maybe come back on a little bit later okay so look um here's the bottom line there's not a huge amount of news let me dive into a chart what's happening here is that we were over bought on the charts extra frothy and you know this is the midst of the pre having dip this is common about 30 days outside ahead of the dip this is pretty normal you know that seventy-two thousand level uh, it uh, was strong resistance. We thought we'd break through it, but it's, uh, you know, it's a tip. It's a bit of a triple top. So that's not necessarily bad news, but it's not the best news. So what do we have ahead of us? I think we do have more downside on this rejection of that 70K level. And, um, and we'll be watching this very closely. Fortunately, we don't have and ERI on the weekly time frame. So the big thing here is that I think this is a this is a normal pullback ahead of the having and uh, we're going to keep an eye on that and this specifically type of pattern if we get a bearish ERI on the weekly chart and a bearish engulfing candle that confirms with our TSI going from green to red and then the signal breaks you, you know that would be a market cycle high. We don't have that and I don't think we're going to have that. Uh, this uh, we just need to pull back a little bit, and we can see it holding. You know, the if we see like this big capitulation candle, which we haven't, that so would be a danger sign. All right, so everyone, uh, don't panic at this point. The bull cycle is still ahead of us. This is sort of the pre-cycle dip. You know, we've seen it multiple times before, and uh, in every cycle. So where do we go? We're going to talk about that. I think we could come down to sixty k possibly 58k and I will talk about that but uh, the short version of that is and the clue is it's one of the things I talk about and learned a long time ago is these vector candles here these large candles here tend to retest the midpoint okay so this is a weekly candle so we could see if we came down and touched 57k then I think that would be the bounce point. Now, I was watching somebody earlier who says 50K, and I don't know. I think that would be the worst of it. 50K would be the 21-week rising EMA, and, and that would also have a nice support structure right back in here. So I, it's not whatever he wants to hear. You know, it's a, that would be a bit of a drop here, but there's a lot of support at that 50K level. So I th would say our buy range is, let's get this drawn, in this box right in this uh, area there okay so it's a bit lower and altcoins are certainly being affected by all this so uh, we're going to look at the uh, news in this class we're going to look at kind of what the charts are telling us and at any moment the reason this is so hard and hard to predict is the etf money uh, we saw outflows on the bitcoin etf here for the first time here uh, yesterday and the day before, uh, Grayscale uh, selling a lot of Bitcoin yesterday, but fortunately, iBits were picking up the slack. And I'll hop over to this article here, Michael's strategy here, as we call him, just faster, Michael Saylor at MicroStrat, just call it Michael strategy. He raise, raises another 600 million in senior convertible notes to buy more Bitcoin. So, you know, this, uh, this bull run is still intact, you guys, and he is continuing to buy all the way up and is not concerned about these short-term dips and pullbacks. So uh, with that here, and I will jump over to the chat here in a moment, but um, uh, those of you that uh, were wanting to short Bitcoin, the signs were pretty clear over the last few days. Our ATR, our dynamic ATR, dynamic ATR flipped to exit mode right here. And uh, we started seeing Bitcoin below the 21 day on the 21 period EMA. Sorry, people keep showing up late, so I have to let them in. On the 21 EMA here, 
breaking down below that 21 day EMA. So here's that dynamic ATR, such a good signal for catching these swings. I like the four hour, I uh, use the, the one hour on occasion. One hour showing, we get a bit of a bounce here. Uh, we don't teach shorting, but uh, if you guys are of that mindset, you know, this one hour chart, if it's above the 21 and 50, it's healthy. If it breaks below the one hour, then there's usually some good shorting opportunities. And typically it'll bounce up to the 50 and reject. And it'll drop and came up to the 50 rejected. And these red arrows are, of course, our early reversal indicator. So as long as we're below that and we have exit, on the dynamic ATR. This can also be used as a stop loss, a dynamic stop loss if things are going higher. So if you were watching that four hour chart, that would be an early indication to have gotten out here back on the 14th. But really hard to judge on the daily charts. You know, I do base my decisions mostly on the daily. I'm also gonna be watching this volatility index, which is one of our indicators. And so if you're new here and haven't seen these before, uh, these are our proprietary indicators and you can find out more about these at cryptomastery.org. We just released a pro pack version of this. Let's see, I misspelled that. So there is an O in there, cryptomastery.org. And uh, you can find out more about these indicators, which are the backbone of what we do here. So here's a good example, just a screenshot of this entry and exit zone on the dynamic average true range. And it's great to catch new entries. When it goes into entry zone, you usually get like a little uh, yellow candle signifying a reversal. So we'll be watching for that for the bounce. I wouldn't suggest buying this dip just now. We'll be waiting for signals like this entry point and also our ERI going green and our TSI also going green. And so there's, uh, of course, a number of these indicators on in this package. I highly recommend you get this. If you sign up, you can get a month free. It's $4.97. You get a month free or $97 a month. So these are the indicators that we'll be uh, talking about today and that we always use to uh, base our decisions. This volatility index, the way to use it, it measures oversold and overbought zones. So the uh, four hour chart here showing that this early signal right in here, also on the 14th, you know, to be honest, I wasn't really watching this. There was so much euphoria and uh, there's a lot going on in the last couple of days. So when we break below that is typically a sign that this is going to go lower. When we leave the green zone, typically it will head lower and down into the red zone. And these are excellent cycle indicators. So back here, caught a nice bounce back in February. This is the a four hour time frame. So if we can zoom out, I just want to kind of show you guys, this is why these indicators are the backbone of what we do. And many of you already use these and are part of our M3 active trader class. So all the way back here though, we had an ERI signal and the TSI went green, signal went green, and then that vol index came up out of the red zone. A great buy signal right back in here, of course, caught the bulk of that move. So we have to realize, of course, that Markets move in cycles. There has to be bulls and bears and each need their turn. And so these are basically giving us the uh, footprint of when that happens. So what we do also have here is a buy block down in here, one, another one of our indicators. This is part of our pro pack. So I think we could, could come down to the 60K range, a lot of buy orders down in here, all the way down, potentially the 58K in the lower air area here. And we'll look at it on a daily chart here. I just wanted to point out if you guys are really wanting to catch these turns, watch the one hour, four hour with the indicators and uh, that dynamic average true range is a good one. Okay, so if I put the ATR on a daily chart, of course, we're still in a bullish macro uptrend. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. It's a bit much to look at on these, but we this flipped bullish on the daily chart all the way back here where it turned into an it went from red to green back in January of last year in 2023. Of course, we also had a big bullish EMA or a big bullish X, uh, early reversal indicator, sorry, uh, on that to back in here on the monthly time frame. So these indicators are so powerful. And, uh, and you can see on the average true range, there's a little bear signal when we flip to bearish and a little bull signal on this one where we go to bullish. So but, but really what's important is this early reversal indicator on the monthly time frames, excellent on catching bottoms. It's only fired four times in the history of Bitcoin, always at the market cycle bottom. And so that's why you need to have this uh, in your arsenal 
what uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Just some of you are new and I see some new faces here. So here we have Bitcoin going back to 2012. That ERI only fired four times at the market cycle low here and here and here. And then, of course, in January of 2023 on the weekly time frame, it's been a lot more effective on the uh, or on the on uh, the ERI on the downside has been a lot more effective on the weekly time frame. So back in here, let me turn off this ATR because it can change the color of the candles. And uh, we saw that here. So the pattern we were will be watching for. The reason I'm not concerned right now is we don't have the bearish ERI. Uh, that is, uh, this is some uh, it's a custom indicator. It was kind of an accidental discovery. Uh, but what's behind the arrow is actually quite interesting. But uh, we don't show that just because it kind of it's kind of difficult to look at. If you wanted to see what the indicator really is, it looks like this. But nobody wants to look at that, so we've kind of color coded this with these arrows, and uh, we confirm it with this secondary indicator called the TSI. So if you're new and just seeing this for the first time, or just for review, you know the three things I'm looking for on a bearish market top predominantly is this early reversal indicator on the weekly time frame confirming with this trend at strength indicator going from green to red below this 80 line. The 80 and 20 zones are pretty standard on most oscillators like a stochastic, et cetera, and an RSI, but this is a custom oscillator that when these two things line up, and the other third thing I look for on a bearish top, a market cycle top would be a bearish uh, engulfing candle on the, on the weekly time frame. So we saw that here, we saw that here, and those were the cycle tops of last year, really this one up in this range, okay? So that's what we're looking for. On the bullish side, <clears throat> we're looking for the opposite, green, 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 and these are the four indicators we use for bullish signals. So what we're looking for specifically on a bounce is a if we come down in this range, uh, when we come down in this range, I'll be looking for ideally this early reversal indicator, first on a daily basis, but then on a weekly, to confirm with this going from red to green above 20. We do have a, a free trader success checklist that you can download on our website. And I'm not going to be using that today because I'm running on the laptop and out of town, but uh, you can go to moonstream.io and download for free our checklist. For some reason, this image isn't loading, but uh, the link should work. And um, you can click on that and uh, just opt in for that free checklist. And essentially, it's an interactive checklist. If you're not using this, if you guys are showing up to classes and you, you haven't downloaded this, haven't used it, uh, it's so important for gauging your trades. And essentially, what it allows you to do is to check off in this PDF when these signals start to align. And so when you start to get a trade score, a trade success score of three or more, that improves the odds. Uh, nobody gets 100% on these trades, but this greatly enhances our odds when we start checking these off. And if you get to like a four or five or a six score on this, very high probability that that trade is going to go in your direction. So, uh, and but all we also important, however, is knowing when to sell and take profits. Here's a pattern too, I'll just point out to everybody is when we start getting this far away, from the exponential moving averages and we start to leave the trend channel then we have to be very uh, careful because that is a frothy type of environment and typically always pulls back you know the big question mark and it was difficult is etf money when will it stop but uh this trend channel i'm gonna massage this a little bit because the old way we had it drawn was more like this the slope was not as steep and so the danger zone really was when we started breaking out above that trend channel and pushed up to the new high which was resistance so we correctly called that it was uh you know i did sort of flip-flop a little bit saying hey look we're back above 70k i was predicting and publicly predicted this uh, kind of pullback here i said we push up on monday on a daily time frame and pull back and we did see that happened back in here and then it pushed up over and was closing above that 72k so i thought hey this looks like the etf money is going to keep us going higher but this was a bit of a bull trap and a fake out here and i know the shorts a lot of what's happening right now are the whales and the high leverage shorts are piling in up in this range and that's why because the buyer sentiment had somewhat exhausted uh, it help, helps to think about it in those terms 
There's a lot of sort of enthusiasm and momentum coming out of this lower range. And when these EMAs start to sort of separate, a lot of buying pressure, this parabolic move, these parabolic vertical moves, which we still have much a bigger one, I believe, you know, um, in the future, once we get into the having in the not too distant future, but these things you got to be really careful with them, especially at when the buyer sentiment sort of runs out. Another clue here on the weekly time frame was this spinning top that we can see right up here indicates indecision. So it's no surprise we're really selling off and uh, that the ETF buyers uh, are taking a break. So again, um, let's take a, another look at a different chart that uh, we can gauge uh, where I think we could come back to and we'll look at some other things here. Where's this chart? I've got a couple of these that uh, I just loaded from the old home office there and the the war station. So, um, you know, look, this pullback, it's um, it feels like it could go deeper here. We've got these green buy, green buy zones and um, so, you know, this is a bit of an extended pullback, but I've had this on here for a while, rejecting at 72, 73K, coming back down and, you know, I, ideally holding around 65K, but at this point, you know, these buy zones, we don't see a lot of buy pressure until we get down around 60,000. So, uh, you know, that's, we have to be prepared for that. And in the long term, you know, you only, you only lose money if you sell. So it helps to know what kind of market that we're in and uh, not to uh, panic when we see this. Now, certainly if you are have some powder dry, I would be waiting and watching carefully for when the dollar cost average back into this market. But, um, you know, we just need to see how this plays out. And of course, I haven't mentioned it, but it's, uh, of course, the reality is that all eyes are on the FOMC tomorrow. Don't expect much of a surprise. You know, there's not, not likely to have a you know, either a rate hike or a rate drop, but it's really in the comments that Powell says regarding inflation. Is it sticky? Uh, some people are predicting we go into deflation. Uh, we really don't want a uh, rate drop because that tends to actually see markets push down because at that point, you know, they, they've really broken the markets. So we just want no rate hikes, no change. Uh, we want Powell to come out and say, hey, you know what? Uh, inflation's okay. You know, they are still saying that it hasn't broke down below, down below 3% on inflation. But of course, they are measuring a lot of different things that suit their purposes. If you'd like to go down the rabbit hole a little bit and see what the real inflation is, you can go over to trueflation.com and it kind of gives you these metrics that, uh, uh, where the what the the actual inflation is, and so um, let's see. Uh, I have to pull up. I might have to log in for this, and so I'm not in the office. So basically, uh, you guys can go and analyze that. But basically, we are on this. We are closer to two percent than three percent if you're measuring the right things that trueflation measures uh it's kind of taking a bit longer to load so i'm not going to get into that just wanted to point that out so anyway um actually yeah here's so here it is trueflation on a daily rate down right around two percent and the u.s government is reporting 3.2 percent because you know they're measuring things that, again suit the narrative that they want to say so they can move things around <clears throat> to suit their needs and so um but right here, this is looking good. The down, the trend is down on the inflation. So it's uh, really a not a bad place, even though they're making it out to sound like it is. We did have PPI numbers come out a little bit hot uh, last week. And this is also partially markets reacting to that. But uh, we were so overextended that uh, any news at all really was ripe to bring things down. So let me just pop over, see if there's any chat questions. Uh, actually, sorry, where was that? Uh, get back over to the charts and my hotkey didn't quite work there like I expected. So let's see, uh, there's the link also in the chat for the pro pack. The Perry says, how are, yeah. So if you have the pro pack, you have uh, the uh, advanced versions of most of those. It doesn't include the dynamic ATR and I believe, um, the volatility index those are part of the basic pack ideally have both if you were going to go with one over the other i would get the uh, pro pack but uh both are excellent to have i highly recommend it i would definitely want to use both and i'm not trying to be self-service uh, uh, self-serving there 
they're the best indicators I've seen. And once I found the creator of those, we partnered and we've come out with some even stronger ones. And one of which that you can see on the screen here is uh, one of them that I invented based on a pattern that I've seen time and time again. That's an excellent precursor for uh, rapid rise in price. It's called the rocket. Uh, and nothing is 100%, but if you get a rocket that's properly formed, like this one right here, it's essentially the, the rocket, like a bottle rocket. This is the rocket fuel. It has to be sitting on a launch pad. I call it rocket on the launch pad. And that is usually a 21 period exponential moving average. And it can also be sort of eyeballed here on something like, uh, you know, support range. So that would be the launch pad. And of course, the, the fuse down below is essential. Essentially, the psychology behind the rocket is that the price opened up at a support level. It sold off at some point in the day, and then it would rally back up and closes near the high of the day. So just uh, taking the name away from it, like the psychology of that, very strong. Sellers tried to push it down. Buyers were in control, pushed it all the way up. But I've noticed <clears throat> this is the ideal rocket uh, scenario. And the taller this candle, the more rocket fuel it can take up into kind of shoot up in the air and then it usually falls back to earth. This one was okay. It didn't have enough of a fuse here. I like to see a deeper fuse showing that the sellers tried to push it down and they were exhausted and then the buyers pushed it back up. So this is a rocket technically, but it's not really as good because the uh, this fuse, the tail is not large enough. And here, another one where it was kind of a short fuse. But um, anyway, so that's a cool indicator also included in the uh, pro pack. So uh, but anyway, here, um, I want to unpack a little bit of more news so we can talk about that. And uh, let's see, we have some question here. We have, so Perry says, any idea why the red sell arrows for the bearish market cycle top are better on the weekly instead of the monthly? You know, that is a really interesting uh, Perry, and um, here's why, because the markets tend to take the stairs higher, but they take the elevator down and the the sentiment changes much faster on a weekly time frame. OK, and that, and that would be my best answer for that. There's probably more to dig into, but I wouldn't uh, dive in, dig into it too much. You know, we're also watching dailies. Typically, I like a longer cycle. So, you know, um, it's it's you pose a very interesting question and um, i don't know but if you'd like i'll unpack a little bit of why the eri how it works because there's some kite some kite <laughs> pardon me psychology in there I'm trying to get through this quickly guys so but let's talk about that for a minute because i think it's a fair point so if we pull up the eri and i go into the oscillator and i'm going to go to i just go to a weekly so it's not as busy the i'll turn these other ones off so we're not too confused on what they do and i'll expand this up so the the actual indicator it looks like this and you can see they align what we did is this is the actual signal here let me open this up for you guys so you can see it and uh, this was an accidental discovery. We were about to deprecate this indicator. It was an old, old, old one called the Stochastics Oscillator. It had some unique features. And we, we were going to deprecate it. But then I said to the programmer, Joe, I said, hey, wait a minute. I've noticed that when the oscillator gets down to around zero or below three and back above 20, within, within three time periods, preferably less, it has a tendency to really continue on. So you can see this. This came down to around zero and then got back above the 20 line in two pe time periods this week on the weekly. And that's why it printed on the down on this weekly time frame. So what does that mean? What it means is, you, you know, and like many great discoveries, you don't know why it does what it does when you discover it. Is that right? So what I believe it is and have come to learn learning the nuances of this. So if markets are oversold down to these levels and really uh, have to be oversold, so again, below three, uh, we have two versions. If you're wondering why there's a small arrow and a larger arrow is because the uh, smaller arrow is, is not is the less ideal scenario. 
and that's because it was below uh, 10. It got, it came from lower, I'm going to go into the weeds here, but uh, the three time periods, it was, it didn't get down to that zero space. And so some of this you can customize in the indicator. Let's not get into that right now. More importantly is that you confirm it with the trend strength indicator. So for now, let's look at this weekly time frame. So basically what it means is there's strong buying pressure, the kind of buying pressure that you need from um, both either whales or, you know, let's just say the whales that includes institutions or the big buyers that have the power to push it through and see it through because retail is not this coordinated uh, retail can move things out of these zones, retail meaning individual investors like us here, but they're not going to be coordinated enough to move market with that much volume and money flow that quickly. So this is a signal that there's strong buying pressure that will likely continue, especially on the weekly time frame. You know, I do like to catch them on the daily uh, as an early indicator. And, uh, but the weekly really gives the uh, stronger signals, especially on uh, when it confirms with the uh, TSI. So it also caught the bottom here back in July of 2021. We saw this weekly ERI. And I'll turn on the TSI here as well. So this class really is, is designed to help teach you guys how to use these. Uh, it was originally started as our um, training class for the Crypto Mastery Indicators, we sort of decided to make it free, covered news, and uh, go over the markets in general. But uh, this is the uh, core of what we do here at Moonstream Crypto, uh, in the uh, trading side anyway, with an M3 Active Trader. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube or Replay or uh, are part of our list and are not um, signed up for this yet, um, if you like these live classes, I do a deeper dive tomorrow in our M3 Active Trader class and that includes the indicators. So if you'd like information about that, that is our highest level training for timing the markets and not so much for your buy and hold long-term, but for people that want to catch these swings and be uh, ready to get out at the exact top here, which again, we called right here to the day and to the week with, with these signals. So um, with that, uh, just to unpack that, what we want to be watching for is now that we understand there's a lot of quant work and math in here, the oscillator has... It has a Keltner channel built in. Uh, it, I don't want anyone to be intimidated. But for so th those of you that like to understand what that means, uh, I can explain it. It just might be a little bit messy on the chart. A Keltner channel is similar to a Bollinger Band. Uh, we don't want you to have to look at that. And so it's built into this indicator. So when the, when the midline is red, it means that it's above the Keltner channel and it usually reverts to the mean. Okay, so a red line indicates it should head lower. Blue, it's between the Keltner channel and a green uh, midline means that it's below the Keltner channel and should go higher. Honestly, I don't really pay attention to the midline on this. It's baked into the calculation. So all I'm looking for, and we can turn that off now that we understand it, and uh, on the bearish side, just to give you an example here, though, that, um, yeah, so just so you guys understand that uh, this went up to 98. So the indicator works above 97. And in this case, it pushed all the way up close to 100. And the bearish ERI is where it goes. It's above 97 and then goes below 80 within three time periods. So we saw this was one, it's actually technically two time periods. So this fired a red arrow. And then here again, it got up to about 98 and then back below 80 in two time periods. So again, it takes huge volume to move that. And so to complete the equation, hedge funds, all of these bigger funds, they are programmatically handled. There's programmatic buying and programmatic selling in the Asian market and the US market. So when we see these big moves quickly, it's essentially, we call it the early reversal indicator because the bigger players, the whales and institutions, this to me says that there's both programmatic selling and that they are they're getting out. It's also contributed to by stop losses and liquidations. The point is that these kind of moves tend to uh, continue. So the good news is for where we are right now, we're not seeing that right here. So we're seeing a bit of a market reversal spinning top up here, but uh, we're not seeing that heavy volume follow through yet. Now, could that happen? It could happen. If the, M if the FOMC comes out tomorrow and says we're raising interest rates, I don't think that's likely. Um, we could see a major sell-off because 
that would indicate um, obviously uh, a, a not a favorable environment for risk on assets. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, the political headwinds behind us are they don't want to crash the economy going into an election. So uh, more than likely, you know, we'll see a little bit of continued sell off, maybe maybe come down in this 65,000 range. And uh, in that case, uh, you, that would make sense to hold if we, worst case scenario, somebody's proposing 50K, that would be the 21 week EMA. Um, and, the, and just looking back 30 days, I, I know that sounds scary, everybody, but if we look back 30 days of gains, where were we? 30 bars ago, we were at 20, I'm sorry, this is weeks. Forgive me, I knew that didn't seem right. Let's go back 30 days and just see where we were in terms of price then. And so it's not erasing those gains, but we do tend to see these in the uh, bear markets or the bull markets going into the halving. So if we go back 30 days, we were right around 50,000. So would that be the end of the world? It wouldn't be the end of the world. And we really haven't gone back to test that key level. Now, I don't think we do. I think 60,000, maybe 58K. Again, this sort of midpoint of the candle I was showing you before. I don't want to get too far in the weeds with that. Uh, that's just a, an old uh, trading, tr not a trick, but the big move, the big candles, when the markets really move, they tend to have their midpoint retested. I haven't really gotten into this very often in this class. But so let's look at this big vector candle here, dropped down on this all the way down, came up to touch that midline here. Similarly, this big down candle came up, broke through that halfway point. And on the other side, this big green candle here kind of came down to retest its midpoint. It's not always exact, but there's, you know, there's reasons for that. This big green candle came down, retests at the midpoint there. So, um, you know, I, I would say it's uh, certainly plausible, if not likely, that uh, we see this midpoint retested around 58K. I think that would be the bottom. But we will be watching and using our indicators. The ERI, early reversal indicator, will be our first signal, uh, even as so much on the four hour time frame, if you want to get a little bit earlier on that. Uh, as those uh, cycles tend to spin a little bit earlier. So, if we see, and when we see, uh, the ERI start to turn up here, go green, and uh, the TSI rather, and then the signal line and the vol index. You know, the, the more of these gives more confluence and probability. You know, risk hedge fund managers are probability managers, and so we play the probabilities. But uh, right now, look uh, on the four hour time frame, still in a downtrend. I don't think the selling has abated. I think we'll probably head down in the 60K range, maybe down to 58K, but probably 60K. Getting a bit of a bounce here on the uh, ERI and the TSI right there, but uh, on the one hour. But really, I make trading decisions based on the daily. If I've decided I think it's time to go back in on a daily, I'll look at the one hour, four hour for timing. So uh, with that, um, you know, it's kind of holding here. The sell-off subsided a bit, but we are in a new downward trending channel. So it's not a major one. I think this is short-lived. And hey, guys, look, this is the bottom line. This is the dip we've wanted. This is the dip that we you should be paying attention to. And while it's true, most people don't have a lot of powder dry. Many people probably had FOMO and got in up here. Totally understand. But uh, in our M3 training class, Active Trader, I've been encouraging people, have some powder dry, wait for this dip, because this is going to be the one we've been waiting for. I was a little concerned we wouldn't get it and we'd push higher and wouldn't have the higher highs that we really want to see. So you know, for what it's worth, this is a good thing, everybody. You can't jump off the roof and land on the trampoline and go higher without three things, a, a roof, a trampoline and gravity and, you know, to pull us down. So I don't want anyone to be afraid. We are not seeing the bearish signals on that weekly time frame. Did see an early sign here with an early reversal indicator there, followed by the TSI that we would head lower on the daily time frame. So minor pullback, we go higher probably in the next week to two weeks. That's my guess. So if you're wondering here, and here's a nuance, by the way, on the early reversal indicator, so we did have a bearish ERI up here, but did not confirm. It did not confirm, and I'll show you why that is. So these two alone are the strongest sort of double team indicators that we have. So what we need to see for a confirmation 
is right here. We need to see the ERI arrow and then also the TSI going red and below 80. And we did not see that. So that's why it was invalidated uh, in this, this range right here, whereas this one is. Okay, so that's pretty simple nuance, uh, you guys. We are working on kind of a super indicator that would combine many of these together. But I, I you know, the magic is in understanding how they behave in combination. So the four kings, as we call it, are the combination of the ERI, that early reversal indicator, and the TSI, this one here going below 80, the signal line also red, and our trend indicator, red here just means no trend. <clears throat> and this dollar sign is the first take profit signal. The bag of money is the second one. So in a bull run, these are useful for sort of taking some profits off the table, waiting for a new key and bell. The key says, hey, we might have a new trend forming or a continuation. The bell is the buy signal. And these are sort of longer term, you know, weekly uh, timeframes. So with that, what we're waiting for in my, when I'll be saying time to get back in, will be when we get a bear sorry bullish eri a green early reversal indicator again showing that strong buying strength coming out of this lower range we haven't had one in a while but um seeing that push higher with a programmatic buying and whale buying and uh, retail buying all combined and then uh, with the tsi uh, also coming out of this lower zone and going green so that's an ideal setup. You know, we want to see this pull back, pull that rubber band down so it can push much higher. So so when those two align, I'm usually buying into a trade. When we see the signal uh, start to, I moved it out of the way. Uh, when they see the signal line also go green, these are different algorithms. So adding to probability that we go higher. So back here, we saw this one went higher there. And uh, sure enough, it shot up higher. And then the bell. So typically, these will happen like a day apart. So the way to trade that, as everyone should be doing, although let's be honest, most of you, uh, most people will go all in, they'll say I'm buying Bitcoin, and they'll put the whole bag in. It's not the way to do it. The way to trade like professionals do is build a position. So let's take a look at an example, if we had the trade success checklist up, we're going to eyeball it here and we go to a weekly time frame. Um, you might say this was a little bit of a janky one because the ERI happened here and the TSI didn't confirm for a while. I do like the weekly because they, they tend to follow through a bit better. And so everything needs to load. Here's, here's a good example. So this is how to properly use these. They work great on altcoins. So we have the ERI go here. Was that a signal to buy Bitcoin? Not by itself. So we would be watching it when it would turn, when the TSI turned green here and broke above 20. That was the confirmed buy signal right in here. And then we had this bullish engulfing candle. These were great with bullish engulfing candles. So we'd be buying there, getting into the position partially, keeping some powder dry because you don't know. But it's also was above the 21 and 50 week EMAs. And then what did we have? We had another bullish engulfing candle right as the signal line went green. So that looks good. You would add to the position there. Uh, it's not financial advice specifically, but this is how we trade our method in our system. And then a couple of days later, we saw the bull, sorry, the bell form that uh, buy signal indicating a longer term trend is ensuing. So here we had the bell. And uh, and so we would be adding to the trade and then you'd be fully into the trade and ride it all the way up here. And you really didn't see a sell signal until right in this range when we had a bearish ERI and the TSI, you know, it actually didn't give a sell signal. The uh, TSI lines would have to get below 80 and they didn't. They sort of reversed. So that was a perfect trade. That's why. Guys, you need these indicators. I don't, you're probably using other things, but a MACD and an RSI, and that's what everyone else is using. And you don't have an edge. These are better. Uh, they do give an edge. And again, they're the backbone of everything we do here. Because if you'd gotten in on this ERI, let's say the TSI was the confirmation here on this, we'll take the top of that candle, but you know, that would have got you 150% on this trade here on Bitcoin. So, hey, look, another a little pullback. Uh, good news. Good news. Why? Because we want to find that next setup on the weekly time frame. And if it comes down in here, let's say it does come down to 50K. The deeper the dip, the bigger the push higher. Uh, I know it's going to be painful, but if you just have 
the conviction to hold on. Many of you have been holding on since through the last bear market. So congrats to you. You guys have diamond hands. And, uh, you, you know, a lot of this is a lot of this really is a bit of a shakeout for the weak hands. And so this exhaustion move higher, no surprise it rejected at 70K. Um, you know, we were all wondering what happens with ETF. The ETF, you know, at these, let me just say, at these key inflection points, the markets are so good at fooling us and keeping the FOMO high, aren't they? Uh, last cycle, it was, hey, we're going to 100,000. Everyone was saying 100,000. And, you know, consensus is dangerous. The reason I thought we would push through higher, and I changed my uh, my mind a bit, even though we predicted a pullback and have been predicting this for some time, I was starting to think that we'd just push on through up to 100K because everyone was waiting for this. The consensus was wait for the dip, right? So when I start hearing everybody saying, I'm going to buy the dip, that's when I get nervous. Uh, but at this point, I think that is the play. We see a dip. It may not be as deep as everyone thinks is the point. And then we push much higher. Okay. So <clears throat> let me just do this here. Uh, I want to pull up this chart here, talk about uh, the uh, take profits zone on this chart. We'll also look at it on a weekly. The other reason that this was really getting frothy here is that on this weekly time frame, we were pushing up into this uh, 88 level, which uh, has traditionally been a topping area on the RSI. I still do use RSIs, but uh, more in a longer term time frame uh, with these zones. These are, this is my take profits zone, as you can see. And so, you know, the prudent thing would have been to take some profit there at that uh, high. And, uh, you know, we, a lot of it at these key inflection points, they're going to be volatile. That's where the battle lines are drawn. And to be fair, the market makers, they are, their game is to liquidate as many highly leveraged degenerate traders that they can. There were a billion dollars in liquidations in this 24-hour period, a couple, like a week or so ago at that peak when we broke 70K, because everyone went leveraged long, and then they tanked it and they pulled it down. And then they wiped out shorts that went uh, leverage short, and then they pushed it up again to 73K. So you just have to be really careful at these inflection points. It'll happen at 80K. It'll happen at 90K. It'll happen at 100K for sure. 100K is going to be a major sell point, uh, and they might even front run the sell off on that. But look at these uh, the zones here, uh, the highest levels. And I have alerts set up in these, you know, 95 on this weekly RSI because this was, you guessed it, January. Uh, of 2020, well, let's see, the, it, the RSI, let me rephrase this. This was January of 2021 when markets were super frothy. And but when we started to see the bearish uh, diversion here, the RSI was going lower as price was going higher. But the point is, got to be really careful at these higher levels at 88 and 94. So we're seeing kind of an, a not unexpected pullback from that 88 level. And you can draw these charts yourselves, even going back further when we get up in these these ranges, you know, between 88 to 90, typically seeing an exhaustion of the uh, movement. And you can look for bearish divergence. So uh, bearish divergence is when the RSI is going lower and price is continuing higher because, of course, price is continued higher in this range, as we saw back in that area. So we can learn a lot on these on these divergences, the RSI, sorry, the stochastics RSI also up in this range and bouncing out of it. So, um, you know, look, um, I had questioned how high we would stay up in this area and uh, it pulled back pretty quickly. So we do want to watch those areas for uh, topping signals. Money flow is, uh, is a bit delayed. It has been coming down. We saw a bit of a bounce, but this is on a weekly time frame. So I imagine this is rolling over. Once this prints at the end of the week, we'll see this coming down, money flow coming down for a bit. And uh, we'll be watching for a bounce. What is interesting is drawing trend lines on these things sometimes because, you know, very often they uh, also form trend channels. And so if we do this... And we clone that and move it over here. Money flow, you know, never goes straight up. It's more of a ebbs and flows. So this is also worth worth keeping on your radar. So what I would like to see here, what I expect to see, you know, money flowing out of the market a little bit more. We're probably here. It's just not reporting because it hasn't, it's not reported real time on these things. And then we come down and then we see something like that. So, you know, we're not far from the ideal time to buy and that's the good news, you guys. Uh, I will come over and see the chat here in a minute. I just want to get through and make the point. Um, the 
Uh, the, the, you know, I don't use MACD that often. I use it on a monthly time frame. These complement our signals. Uh, the MACD on a monthly time frame. This is where I was pounding the table to get out of the markets in January of 2022. But at these peak levels, I have screenshots of where I was suggesting our M3 active traders to start getting into cash as early as September. And then voicing that stronger opinion in November and December. And then when we saw this crossover, I was saying, get out of these markets. And some of you listened and uh, are glad you did. Some of you unfortunately didn't. But um, this, uh, you know, um, it's, you know, no judgment. That's how you learn. But the what we're also watching here is the monthly MACD. So we had, say, six, six or seven large green candles and then it started rolling over so we're kind of in that range you know we we could be kind of peaking on the macd next month we price continuing higher but of course we saw that too last in last cycle where we want to really be careful is when these start going down and prices are going higher there's more bearish divergence and uh so we want to be aware of that and uh so we'll be kind of watching for that also uh one last thing i want to talk about too on the monthly time frame uh, what is significant here, why March should be a red month, because we haven't seen seven monthly candles in a row in the history of Bitcoin. So more than likely, we do see this as a red candle and uh, we could continue lower here. But in, I, I think this is going to be accelerated once we get closer to the having, you know, where people were going to I still believe it's a left translated cycle. Uh, we've been talking about that for eight months now, and recently other people have been stating the same. But uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, we have a seventh. This is a potentially seventh green candle, monthly green candle in a row. I don't think that's going to happen. So with that in mind, uh, it's likely we end the month below 60K, which would make that red and uh, and down you know, in that 58 to, to 60 range. The danger there, though, is that would be an inverted hammer, and uh, that would signify more downside. So the ideal scenario here is we sort of have a slightly, uh, just letting somebody in here, uh, welcome Malti, a uh, slightly bearish, slightly red candle. What we really don't want to see is a big red inverted hammer, because then, that, then we could see that 50K pullback. But either way, either way, don't sell. Uh, this is uh, don't have weekends. This is this is happening, and um, you know even if it came down to forty six five k, I don't believe that'll happen. Uh, you know we have the midpoint of this vector candle here. Uh, that's something we haven't talked about yet. That would be right above fifty k. So as much as I don't want to say we could come to fifty k, we could come to fifty k, and maybe it takes you know the beginning of April starts red and then it shoots up higher. That's what I think is most likely here, guys, and so. At any rate, uh, let me see. Let's see. Let's take a look at the iBit real quick. Uh, this is a one hour chart. Start, starting to see some buying come back in on the iBit. The longer time frame, of course, that's the BlackRock ETF. What I really don't want to see as the four hour, well, this is a four hour time frame, but still the 21 period crossing below the 50 period because I was watching that back here. This is where I was saying we go higher on the IBIT right above 25 when the, the, tw the 21 period got above the 50 period, this this green arrow here. If we start heading lower there, I, well, there's, there's clearly buying in this range and we're oversold on the TSI. So what if we get an ERI TSI in a four hour on the IBIT, uh, this has been very helpful in predicting the future price of spot Bitcoin. Uh, we were watching the, this is part of the ERI Pro, the uh, Pro indicators. These are buy blocks. Uh, this is buy orders, these longer ones. The, the lighter green is actual money flow coming in in more of a real-time basis. So when we see these, we're confident price goes higher. So buy blocks, buy blocks, buy blocks, buy blocks. And when we start to see those on the four hour and even the 12 hour, uh, that that's going to be bullish, you know, and this was an early clue too, that we, we were going to sell off here. A lot of sell orders. We had, uh, this is this ERI pro again, this red box and the, uh, the 12 hour ERI. That's interesting. Uh, sometimes I do play around with the 12 hour ERI TSI to get a little earlier look at things. Uh, generally better to use daily, but uh, you know, when these fast moving markets, 
that 12 hour, certainly we should put it on our radar for that ERI. So we'll be watching for a, a turnover again uh, to the upside. But, uh, you know, getting a bit of a bounce here probably would make sense, but I think there's more downside in this. However, however, uh, that 50 period, well, that's a 12 hour chart. Looking for some turnover on the green. Use that as a clue. I wouldn't trade off of it. And again, if you are watching this on YouTube or the clips, if you like these classes and would like to join our deeper dive, we do this also on Wednesday. We This is called our M3 Active Trader class. You can find out more at moonstream.io slash M3. This is our highest level training. Uh, we dive into a little bit deeper into this, uh, not so much the news, more into the DXY and total market cap and what's happening uh, in those categories, as well as buy recommendations. You get 24-7 access to me in a chat room in Signal. So I'm always in there every day updating. And in my market update yesterday, I was suggesting that we go lower here and uh, some of the possible targets. So today's sell-off is not unexpected. So if you'd like a little bit of uh, more advanced notice to where things could go, uh, check this out. And uh, again, uh, you get access to uh, all of the, you get access to me, uh, there's a private members area with a lot of great uh, videos, the replays of the live classes, and some other templates that you can use um, that I'll show you here in a minute, like high probability candlestick patterns, a dollar cost averaging interactive worksheet, the portfolio tracker, and high probability trading patterns to really help your trading go to the next level so that you can be making these calls yourself and not getting in late. It's great to unpack and understand why these things have happened, but we were ahead of this and uh, predicting it here over the last few days. And you can read some of the reviews. This is only a fraction of these. So anyway, uh, that's for those of you that are not already in uh, the class. You also can get a free one hour private trader session with me. It's a thousand dollar value and uh, really kind of help you get to uh, navigate this bull market and, and you get a cool hat. So check that out, everybody. Um, I am here today mostly to help you guys learn the indicators and get a feel for what's going on in the markets. Uh, tomorrow, we'll talk about uh, all coins and uh, where I think there's opportunity there. There are two that are looking strong that I bought yesterday that uh, are looking still looking good. And uh, also a, a, a moon a moon coin call that we've been talking about. And I think it's an excellent time to be uh, buying that. And if you just want the indicators, that's CryptoMastery.org, you guys. So let me get over to the uh, chat. And uh, let's see. Uh, well, I'll come back to this, see if I missed any chats here. All uh, right. Okay. Um, let's see. We covered that. Uh, let's see. How are these different? So we talked about that. Speaking of whales moving the markets, did you see a whale flash crash uh, Bitcoin price on MEXC? down to 9k uh david i heard that it was on bitmex but uh it could have been um uh, yeah you know what I, I would be curious to see if um any orders actually got filled at those levels what can happen is and maybe somebody got really lucky as they put in a because this this uh, was reported in the 2021 bull run if you put a limit buy order in at like nine or it was around nine or ten k also and there were no bids uh it's possible that it could have been filled you know if somebody hit a market sell order and there were no bids for to fill it or not enough uh it could have done that that sounds quite a, quite far though i don't know if they would have honored that trade uh, it might have been a misprint uh, if if it happened that would be we'll we'll definitely keep to keep an eye out for that but it's obviously not the norm the shorts have been having a party i do follow some of the uh, short uh, short term the day traders there's one group that uh, they're having a field day and they've been calling for a drop for some time uh, and uh, well but i do know that a lot of traders get wrecked in there as well so you have to be really good at reading the tea leaves uh, we at some point might be i used to teach a sniper trader class it's just it's very manipulated market and you can get liquidated very easily but um yeah you know if you were short if you if you were short and covered there i think more than likely though a short didn't make a ton of money somebody with a low limit bid uh, lucked out and bought a bitcoin for 9k it, that can happen. Uh, we'll see. Whales are whales. Sharks are sharks. Retail are guppies, chub, and clownfish. <laughs> That's funny, Perry. Uh, I used to own a pet store a long, long time ago. So I used to, 
Uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with all of those, except for a job. I'm, what's, I'm not sure what that is. We used to have some clownfish, though. But yeah, we are the little fish in this game, you guys. And, and I guess it's, it is worth noting that um, it's impossible to predict uh, what, when these things happen. The, the nuance there is to get really good at understanding And I use this I use this analogy last week. Like when when markets get like up this high above the sort of the normal order of things, like use let's just say that the twenty one period exponential moving average uh, or any moving average is kind of like on the ground, and you can jump you can jump up in the air, but you're going to come back to the ground at some point. And last week, I think I said this looks like a Chinese uh, spy balloon way up in the atmosphere, just waiting to get shot down. And uh, I think it was a day later or two then that sure enough things came down. Be wary of these vertical rises; they are getting away from the mean, and oftentimes. That's why I like these trend channels. This this has been a red flag for me for weeks. It's not normal to see this get above the trend channel. And, you know, there are times when you have to expand the trend channel a little bit, but I really don't like doing that. And uh, in this case, it is uh, reverting down toward the mean. If this is the new trend channel, the mean would be around 52K, uh, even down to that 50K level. So, hey, look, if you want to put in some limit buy orders at 50K, why not? Uh, you might as well. And then some around 55 and then 58 all in that region because that would be, this would be great places to pick up some more Bitcoin. Now, most of us are using Bitcoin as a North Star for buying altcoins. Uh, you know, I, I was tempted, very tempted to sell Ethereum at 4,000, uh, clear big round number resistance. And, but I just, again, ETF money and then the idea of the ETF narrative. But part of the reason that sold off is the ETF narrative uh, has been, uh, uh, you know, they're saying it's a less of likelihood. Now, we are getting a weekly ERI, bearish ERI on ETH. Here's the thing, and here's the nuance you want to remember, you guys. Uh, we have to wait till the end of the week. So at the end of the time period, if by Sunday, and we're only on Tuesday, if by Sunday ETH is still showing an ERI, I'm going to be watching very closely and if the TSI is getting below 80, uh, I'm going to sell at least half of my Ethereum. Uh, I don't question these signals. They are they are all very accurate. When they confirm, here's one that confirmed ERI, uh, also like a bearish engulfing candle, but the TSI broke down below here. So that was a clear sell. And of course, it sold off for a bit. And then we had a better buy opportunity. Why don't, would I never sell all of it? You never know what's going to happen. The name in the game is dollar cost average. If you see a sell signal and you sell half, wait for the next buy signals. And this is what we also have at our uh, wind at our back. So here, bullish ERI, bullish engulfing, bullish TSI. This was the buy order on ETH right down in here. So uh, that's what I'm waiting for. Next buy signal. I'd rather have some powder dry to get in some more. And so, um, but uh, we're also getting a key bell sequence possibly. So this is not confirmed yet. Not confirmed. How do I set an alert for the four hour average to range? David says, yeah, that's a good question. It's easy. So if you come over here, that's a good point on these, uh, on these indicators, you can set alerts on them. So I'm going to set a couple with you guys for the vol index. Since that's right around the corner, I'm going to open that up. You just click on that. So little dots show up, right click or double click on a Mac, go up to add alert on add alert on vol index. And then all you have to do is change it to crossing up. So you have oversold, overbought. I want to know specifically when it crosses up over the 20 line. Okay, for me, that's this. And that's sort of, you know, sometimes I'll hit it a little bit higher, like 21, just to confirm it when it goes black. So if we modify that alert, let me double click on that. I'm going to actually bump it up one. Uh, that's only going to do it in the smaller increments. So there, and then I also like to give myself a, a signal saying buy, and I'll, I'll just, I have an acronym. It calls it crypto bulls. I like to call it volley up, volley, vol index up 20. So buy. I do recommend you give yourself kind of specific direction. 
Uh, if you're not sure, I'll do exclamation, question mark, exclamation, question. You use what's good for you. But the point is this will break up above that at around 21, then I'll be alerted. And so that is one thing and your specific question, however, it's interesting, we're getting a four hour early reversal indicator on the upside, but uh, likely it'll reject here and come down. Um, your question would be on the dynamic ATR, same thing, just click on it until you get the little circles there. You can also do it over on the drop down. So under ATR entry, we go over to the more menu and say add alert. And specifically add alert, it's already set. So the rocket is when it's green, the red little triangle is bearish. You can change those by the way, if you wanted to uh, in the settings. So basically I wanna know when it goes green, I'll have that there. And um, I'm gonna do that once per bar close during this bull market. Every time that shifts, I wanna know both on the bullish side and the bearish side, I'm gonna do both. So I'll go back in here because I wasn't watching this. And uh, now in retrospect, I wish I had known the ATR went into exit mode right here because that would have been an earlier clue that we're heading lower as well. Uh, and so uh, it's hard, this is why the alerts are so important because it's really hard to keep an eye on everything and having technology helping you with these things. At alert, I'm also going to go and when it goes bearish next time, once per bar close. You know, you can turn that off. Sometimes it gets annoying, but I want to know every time that changes. Because the other thing that we are really doing on this bull run is using these trend channels. And our goal is to identify as early as possible when a new trend channel emerges. So here we have a downward trending channel and we would not want to add to this until we get a new upward trending channel. And that would require higher, higher lows and higher highs. We'd have to start kind of pushing up into this region back above 68K, or if we go lower, start breaking out of the downward trending channel. But that can be helped with the uh, dynamic average true range. Uh, is that too much, you guys? Can you, are you following? Uh, let me see. I wanna get through some of the more of the questions and comments. Uh, let's see, Perry says, do you think rates could be cut? I don't. Um, I don't think there's a rate cut coming, uh, but but that would certainly, you know, what what the catalyst I was looking for that could have triggered a rate cut would be bank failures, and uh, you know, massive sort of um, signs that they broke in the economy and the banking system, and I think that a rate cut is more priced in and likely for later in the year. We can pull up the Fed FOMC page. They, their probability ratings have been dead on. And uh, rate surprises are uh, rare, but uh, we can look at that. Uh, if we did have a rate cut, uh, we, this thing would rally like crazy in, in Bitcoin and crypto initially. Um, well, in history has proven in that in the stock markets, however, that uh, typically it, it brings those down. I don't know, guys. This time is different, so we have to be careful. Um, we're, we're not going to hit 9k again, Pirate J. Uh, I'll bet my left hand on it. Uh, so, um, you know, that we're not going to go that low. Somebody, this, this, <laughs> that was an anomaly. Uh, when I say not go down to 9k, I'm not betting my hand on a, on a flat, a, a flash crash that gets filled on a limit order. Those, those anomalies happen. They're very rare, but, uh, yeah, no, there, uh, the, we won't go below 16.5. But even then, the next market cycle low, which we've done a study on, we talk, we covered that in M3. The I think the next market cycle low, once we go up to 150,000, potentially 210,000, maybe more. Uh, the study we did is really interesting using Pi, shows it around 38K. Uh, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. That's just my 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 feeling, but anyway we'll see another study says we don't go below 70 again uh, once we get up to new highs but you know no 16k 9k no way not a chance uh not unless i, I don't see that happen unless if we if that happened it's all over so let's see uh stink bids yeah perry says on my holdings set really low just in case of flash crashes you know sure but let's be fair you're not gonna tie up a majority of your capital on an unlikely scenario but if you had $1,000, it's good bragging rights at the country club. 
uh, or hanging out with your friends. Can your indicators have alerts set on them? Uh, Perry, yeah, I just showed you that uh, at all time frames and fractals, by the way. Um, if any of you are day traders, this TSI is phenomenal on a one minute, three minute, 15 minute, even a 30 second. I'm not encouraging day trading, but uh, in the last 2022, I was doing very well just using the TSI oscillations and the 21 and 50 period moving average, catching these uh, shorting right into that 50 period EMA and catching a capitulation drop, tripled in account size one day, uh, gave some of it back, gave a lot of it back over the weekend, different market maker, tricky business. Okay, so um, yeah, and then KS points out the indicators work on most stocks. And other anything on TradingView they work on. Uh, let's see, uh, trading can TradingView automatically trigger actual orders with the alerts? Which exchanges? Um, so the answer to that is Perry. It's um, there's a way to do it with software, and Joe has we've looked at it. It's called Alertatron. Um, and that's uh, we have not done that yet. We're what we're trying to do here, and in the process of and likely bring on an investor is getting a programmer to combine the ERI and TSI uh, and uh, as into one indicator that uh, would be a buy sell indicator. If we can automate single indicators, but that's a conversation for later. If you wanted to play around with that, I also had a friend, he sells a trading bot and somehow this person one of his clients said they were using our indicators to fire their trading bot and they were hitting 100% or winners, but uh, that that's unsustainable. I'm sure that's not still 100% and I never heard from him again. So, but let me get back to you on that. Uh, you know, I'm going to run it by uh, Joe. I'd like to automate this for sure because we may be starting a crypto hedge fund with said investor, but I won't get into that right now. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, Buying Salon at eight bucks was smartest thing ever. We bought at eighteen. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, even thirty-five. I mean, uh, you know, that was Solana was my pick in August for our newsletter, August first of twenty twenty-one. I said it would pull back to thirty-five dollars. That was the buy. It did, and it went up. Uh, we sold early and waiting for a dip that never came. So Solana is not one to typically um, take profits on. I would see it. You know, take always take some profits. It did pull back from 200 a bit, but uh, that thing is a rocket ship because it went up 657 percent after that call. All right, um, do you guys have any more questions here? I don't see any more. And so, how are we doing on time? A little bit over an hour. Again, if you'd like to take a deeper dive into all of this, uh, we do take a much deeper dive in the active trader class tomorrow. We look at uh, one thing I'm started looking at is Sol dominance. And so you got ETH, Bitcoin dominance, Solana dominance. Uh, we'll look at that tomorrow. USDT, we're seeing a lot of people taking money out of the markets, leaving it in stable coins. You know, the DXY is having a bit of a bounce. We have a thorough study on that. Uh, we'll unpack that tomorrow. And, uh, and obviously that uh, goes inversely to Bitcoin. Total market cap, you know, uh, all along I was saying, watch that two. 0.45 trillion level and it's sure enough it's pulling back so we'll do a study on the total market cap because uh, that is really the, the true driver that when the total market cap hit three trillion dollars in the last cycle that was the market cycle top you know bitcoin wasn't the one to watch it was when it hit three trillion almost to the the dollar the market sold off programmatic buying and selling so, and uh, I did mention two coins that uh, I was buying and recommending the last few days. Phantom coin up 11.45%. Uh, AVAX also looking relatively strong. I like both of these. And so everything else is a sea of red. And uh, we have a couple others that I'll be talking about tomorrow that also look good that I've been watching. Uh, so anyway, uh, some of you are just showing up here. We are have covered all we're going to cover today, but the replay should be up in the afternoon on the YouTube channel. Uh, one last question here coming in. Let's see. Okay, so Perry's asking a bit confused on the differences between the indicator packages for sale, the pro versus non-pro. Sure enough, fair enough. Uh, let's go to the basic ones, and that's at cryptomastery.org. Let me jump to that. And so if you're new to these indicators, I would say that's a good place to start. And let me put the chat out of the way. But essentially, 
So crypto uh, mastery indicators, uh, these are the following. The volatility index, that was that oversold condition that is great for sort of four, an hour, four hour you know, active trading. And uh, that's unique to this package. Um, if you're if you're really ask if you're asking which one should I get, uh, that's a fair question. Um, we are, mm, it's uh, there's a good deal on the the pro versions, and they are essentially uh, advanced versions of four of these. And uh, there's uh, a new one called the Bollinger Band, and a couple others. There's a scanner, so there's some overlap. I would suggest having both. But for the time being, learning with these is a good way to learn them. So the early reversal indicator, that's that green arrow, red arrow. The ERI Pro adds in a money flow box, uh, where which is also useful. The uh, dynamic ATR is that uh, range, sort of a dynamic stop loss also. So many of you ask, what should I keep my stop losses? Um, you know, don't do it as a percentage. You should like the dynamic ATR changes as it goes up. Some people use the 21 and 50 day EMAs. Uh, dynamic ATR is great for using as a stop loss, but also when the sentiment is shifted. So that's in here only the trend indicator. Uh, the Trend Pro has a little bit of a different functionality where you can overlay it on the charts. So the Pro versions are a little more advanced. Uh, the TSI and the TSI Pro, uh, there's little nuances to it. Mostly the Pro versions are for the the current users that want a little bit more functionality. Uh, do you need both? I wouldn't say you need both. Do you want both? It's worth it. Uh, and so the radar screener is part of the base package. The signal line, part of the base package. Uh, in the pro version, you're also getting the rocket. I don't even have a sales page for it. We pushed out a promo last week. So um, anyway, pricing though, what you could do is you could go monthly on the on these or just get for $497 for six months. 497 for six months for the bull run. Uh, you get a month free. I would do that. And then um, let's see, Myrene, could you make a note that these buy button links, uh, I thought I fixed them all in the, the groove cart, but uh, so I still I'm clicking on some of these and they're giving me a dead page. So uh, we need to get that fixed. I was sure we, we corrected that. So let's see, I think the top order button is working maybe i have yeah so so just use the top order button some of the other links have been uh, corrupted or with old links but here you can see that um for 497 that's for six months you get a month free uh totally worth it and uh so that's this one this uh, option here so it's zero dollars today and for you get basically a month free and then it's 497 for the six months all right so uh or you can go monthly the link for the pro version uh, I could dip into that a little bit. It's um, we um, we're we're releasing another. We're adding another one or two in the pro package. I just have to check with Joe on that, and I don't have these queued up, so uh, that might be uh, something we need to hop on. But uh, let's see. Let me just see. Perry, a bit confused. The uh, basic for a month, ninety-seven is a good start. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, I would say that, uh, and then decide if you want to add the pro versions because we do have an excellent lifetime offer, which is the uh, fourteen ninety seven. Look, um, if you're serious about maximizing this bull run, uh, don't uh, trip over dollars to pick up dimes. I mean, these are the best indicators that we've used. Certainly, you can use them in conjunction with other ones you like. That's better uh, to a point, but you don't want to have so much that you have paral analysis paralysis. I've used the cipher indicator. I find it terribly confusing and I was trying to use it with these and I abandoned those because ours tell me everything I need to know and I have high, higher confidence in these, especially now that we've added money flow on the ERI Pro. So uh, let's see. Um, uh, pro sales page. Okay, um, Perry, thank you for that. Uh, Myrene, can you make a note of that? Uh, we need to remove that from the sales page uh, that there are classes on Tuesday with Crypto Girl and uh, and Joe's. That's old. I think basically we, we were in such a hurry to get that up that we copied an order form from the regular indicators. So we will be talking about that more and have a uh, more a clearer uh, a, a description of that. Um, if you'd like, we can send you the replay of the webinar demo I did on the pro indicators recently. And uh, just reach out to Myrene, who's uh, in the chat here, Perry, and she can send that to you. Uh, so anyway, um, but highly recommend those one. I would like, since you asked, let me just show you the one of the new indicators that I love. 
and uh, is the, let me put the chat out of the way. Uh, okay, I'm just reading some news here. Bitcoin perpetual futures funding rate still elevated. So we still have to flush out some more of the this uh, fluff. But uh, let's do this. Uh, I want to show you guys the Bollinger Band Pro. And this is some of the, so the Pro Pack. Yeah, so I've got the, we've got the order block detector, which is there. We've got RSI Pro, which I haven't really, I have, or we haven't talked about yet. That's pretty cool. And we have something called a crypto screener we haven't talked about yet. So we've got more things we're adding to the Pro Pack. And, uh, and that's going to be really exciting. Let me show you this one. And there's also a Signal Line Pro. The Bollinger Band should be loading up here. And uh, so with that, let me clean up some of this chart. And let's go to a different one because I've got a lot on that. And essentially, uh, don't go anywhere. You want to see this. So I'll go to AVAX, uh, maybe Phantom. Well, AVAX has a ton of the rockets, though. Yeah. Okay. So the Bollinger brand, uh, Bollinger band. So basically, many of you guys know I, I don't use a standard Bollinger band on with crypto. You know, at the very least, change the standard deviation to a three standard deviation, not two. It doesn't fit. With the third, it fits very well. So with the Bollinger band, you drag it onto your chart, and well, I've got way too much stuff on here. You can't see it now. And then you merge this. The scales on the one on the right, bear with me. Okay. And what we see here now, let me get rid of this price. And what else can I get rid of to not confuse you guys? I'll turn off the uh, ERI Pro, but uh, I'll leave the rocket on. I'll turn off the order block detector and then we'll go full screen. Uh, I could, I could share, here, let's do this. Okay, so now we're full screen. So the Bollinger Band here, um, that's we've color coded it for red on top, because if it gets above the third standard deviation Bollinger band or even touches it, that's bearish. It reverts to the mean. Now, since I have a 21 period EMA on, most Bollinger bands come with a similar thing called the basis line. I'm going to turn off the basis line, that blue line, so we can see this a little better. Okay. Uh, purely your preference. I, I like the EMAs a little better. So now what we see. So let's look at this. So on this, and the vertical red line means that it closed or the real body got ahead, got above the upper Bollinger Band, which is overbought. So we have this vertical red line signifies the real body of the candle kind of closed above that range and is more likely to go sideways or revert. So it just makes it visually a lot easier. But we can also see when it come up, came up and touched the upper Bollinger Band, invariably it pulls back. See how close that is? This is, this is almost perfect, perfectly designed for crypto. And uh, here it got above it, it sold down. So for taking profits, this, this, this uh, Bollinger Band Pro is excellent. And again, these, uh, you know, we have a much higher probability of reverting if we see the red vertical line and see, sure enough, it pulled back. Yeah, right here, it touched it, it pulled back. So we might actually add it where if it touches, it puts a lighter red vertical line. But this, these are the ones you want to pay attention to. If you see a coin, I don't care what it is, get above and close above that upper Bollinger Band, I would take some profits because it pulls back almost invariably. Okay, now it doesn't mean it can't ride it all higher though, you know, so these in these certain situations, we'll see that like on Bitcoin. But if it's above and you see that red line, very highly likely that uh, it uh, pulls back down or goes sideways. See right down here. I'll talk about the rocket here for a second. But uh, here we saw so red, double red, sideways, 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 you know, uh, saw it again, pulled back. So these are great profit-taking signals. I mean, you have to overlay what kind of market are we in. If it's in a raging bull market, it's more likely to ride the upper edge. But um, anyway, this has been very useful. I, and certainly on the, the lower side too, we haven't seen that for a while. We can go all the way back here when Bitcoin hit the lower end of the Bollinger Band. This is something we'll be looking at if this sell-off continues and gets bad enough. Uh, a break below the lower Bollinger Band basically says the sell-off's over. It's going to revert to the mean. In this case, it went sideways, 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 right? 
But uh, those are just additional clues to add to the probability. And uh, similarly, the rocket that I talked about earlier today, here's another textbook rocket shot up into the sky, ran out of rocket fuel. These are good for short-term pumps. Here's a rocket, boom, boom, boom. You know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, whatever the time frame is. And uh, you can see a number of these uh, if they if they if they conflict, like we had a rocket here, this actually we're still tweaking the rocket because these are not textbook rockets here. We want to see a little bit lower tail, and ideally sitting right on the twenty one and fifty day EMA. So we saw two right in here, and then Bitcoin took off. So that rocket's just one of those discoveries that uh, we love. Uh, what is interesting, Bollinger bands are tightening, so you know we we would expect a move here in the next sort of week or two, generally in the the direction it's going. But uh, I'm not going to make that call right right there. Okay, uh, let's see. Bollinger band is in the pro. Yeah, uh, is it on the checklist? Uh, so uh, that's an interesting question, Perry. So we have included our modified Bollinger band where you just take a standard one and change the standard deviation to three on the checklist. Yes. And it's interchangeable. I'll probably update it for using with our uh, Bollinger band pro. And, uh, but it's same, same, you know, it gets above the top, uh, you know, likely to pull back or go sideways and refresh. If it gets below the green, likely to revert to the mean and go higher. So uh, that's all we have time for guys. I, um, I'll just see if there's any new news or anything happening here. You know, Bitcoin has not really capitulated yet. I think we push up a little bit on the four hour, then we do drop. I think we drop down to the 60K range, you guys, and and maybe dip down around 59K, 58K, and then we start to push higher. Uh, I, that's going to be a bit painful. And you just have to not look at it every day and uh, don't uh, panic because you know, we were in it for the longer term. And uh, interestingly, you know, I am looking for like signs of strength in this downturn for when we do turn what might look good for a pop. And there's a couple of them. We'll look at those tomorrow, you guys. So uh, anyway, thanks, everybody. Uh, and sorry for the um, little of a late start here. I'll just turn on my camera. I gave you a quick wave calling calling in for my uh, beach house. Try to get out of town for some uh, clarity thinking. And I wasn't expecting this big sell off, but it, it was much worse earlier today. Obviously, we're only 1900 down. We were down over 4000 earlier today. So I, I do think it bleeds down a bit slowly. But uh, again, these areas, 58K would be the midpoint of the vector candle recently. And by the time we get there on a weekly time frame, this could take a few weeks going into the halving. But uh, the next phase, the next phase higher is going to be explosive and we'll see all this money coming back in. And uh, I feel strongly about that. However, we won't be getting in until our indicators tell us to, you know, I'll make a decision sort of on the daily and weekly, but to time it, I'll use the one hour, four hour. If you want to narrow that down a bit, it takes a little more skill to do that, but all these oscillations, sometimes, you know, just sometimes they, they match up and that's when the ideal times are to get in. ERI, TSI, Signal and Pro. If you don't have our indicators, go to cryptomastery.org. Uh, you're going to want to have these. They can more than pay for themselves many, many, many times over. And if you're a serious trader and want all of the edge you can, check out our pro version of the indicators at uh, moonstream.io slash mastery pro. Uh, we have been designing these, developing these. My partner is a quant engineer, programmer, and professional trader. He has automated systems trading the futures and uh, and um, on, on, on trade station and crypto. I mean, this guy's... Uh, he's the best. So these are not just some white label indicators you can find anywhere else. Uh, if we ever have used one, we're modifying it to make it better so that you guys can use that. And of course, the order block detector also been a huge help to us. Let me just show you this. If you haven't seen this before, uh, I can add it back in. The M3 order block detector here shows where there's buying pressure. So again, right in here, mid vector candle I talk about. I think, mark my words, this means we're going to come down in this range. And this is where the buy blocks are, right in the 60,000 range. You could dip down to 58K and then push up much higher. That's what I see. And uh, that's what we'll be uh, basing our decisions on and keeping an eye on. But, uh, you know, we wait. We wait and watch. Uh, here's the TSI Pro for those of you that are interested in that. 
Uh, this uh, has a little bit more bells and whistles here that we'll talk about these vertical green lines, but um, don't want to get into that just now. And the Trend Pro also has just makes it a little easier to see a little bit different how you read it. But, uh, you know, look, uh, the base indicators are great to start. If you're new to this, you can always add the pro versions as you go once you're more comfortable uh, with that. So anyway, thanks, guys. I'll talk to you guys. Many of you will talk to you again tomorrow in M3 Active Trader. We'll dive deeper, of course, into the DXY total market cap and some altcoin opportunities. And uh, by then, we'll know more. And then, of course, uh, feel free to join us for Retire Rich on Thursday. You can find out more about all of our offerings here at moonstream.io. And uh, these are all services we offer here, the crypto newsletter, crypto mastery indicators we talked about today. By the way, our newsletter does mon monthly picks. If you're new to all this, you can find out about that. Our pick from February went up. Uh, it's, it's a 100x potential. That thing has on a tear, and it's also looking good at reentry now. But M3 Active Trader, you can learn about that at moonstream.io slash M3. Our Retire Rich class is application only. You have to read this page and email us at uh, moonstreamvip at gmail.com. That's uh, sort of our inner circle. And then I do some coaching, mentoring, and portfolio creation. If you just want to have somebody want to have somebody create the optimal portfolio for you, if you're a, so six figures in the market or more, that's my sweet spot and clients that work best with have about uh, eight or nine of those. And, um, you know, not for everybody, but uh, we've got something for everybody. And of course, some free things down at the bottom. Uh, to If you'd like to sign up for our weekly newsletter, do that. And these weekly free crypto trainings and the crypto checklist. And uh, again, uh, you know, some reason, I think the image does show on most computers, but for some, it might be my ad blocker. But I don't know why that would only work on that one. Let me just check. Yeah, so uh, actually, no, it's like we're missing an image. So, Myrene, maybe you could take a look at that. I know that's been an ongoing thing that sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe it's the file type we have to change out. But anyway, guys, I'm going to let you go. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. And, um, you know, look, don't worry. This is the pullback we've been waiting for and, and wanting. Uh, if you're scared about losing money, taking partial losses to buy back lower is, is always a good idea. Uh, not necessarily sell all of it or just don't have your head in the sand and panic like a deer in headlights. Uh, know your risk parameters and, um, and uh, just don't panic sell if we go lower because uh, that's a temporary. It's shaking out the weak hands. This bull run is not over, everybody. We're going higher, I promise. All right, you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.